What's going on everybody and welcome to a new tutorial series. In this series what we're going to be covering is Google Cloud. We're not going to be able to get through everything that Google Cloud has to offer, but at least some of the things. So uh, to get there it's cloud.google.com. If this is your first account you should get $300 in credit to play around with so hopefully this doesn't cost you a thing. Now um, when you come here you can go to products and see basically all the things that are available. The first thing we're gonna cover and cover in this tutorial is the compute engine, which is just your typical virtual machine. Uh, but they also have all kinds of stuff um, like uh, storage and obviously more computation, some networking stuff, big data like BigQuery, uh, machine learning tasks, a, you know just simple cloud machine learning. They've got, I, I'm not quite positive what cloud job, obviously it's something for job discovery and search, but I'm not quite sure how that works. Um, they've got a natural language API, which I plan to cover. Uh, speech API, which I would like to cover. I'm not positive I'm going to do it, especially since it's in beta right now. Um, the translation API, which I would like to cover. And the vision API, which I would definitely like to cover. We'll maybe do video intelligence if it exits uh, private beta. Anyway, uh, the first thing we're going to do is the, the compute engine. So one, once you like sign in and create an account, generally to get where you want to be, usually you're going to go to console. So I'll head there and I already have some stuff set up here. You can see I've spent a whopping eight pennies. Crazy. Uh, if you have just created an account, chances are you've already got a project kind of created for you. But if you have had an account for a long time or whatever, uh, you can come up here and then hit this drop down and either create a new project or kind of work off an existing project. So I've got tutorials here, I'm good to go. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is get to the, just we're just gonna do a simple virtual machine. So this is something that would compete with like DigitalOcean or AWS EC2, something like that. Um, although I don't know 100% if it's, I don't think it's actually elastic, but anyway, <laughs> I'm not gonna get into the semantics right now. But anyways, kind of compete with any sort of virtual private server. So uh, to get there, come to the little hamburger thing, click on that, come on down to Compute Engine. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and hit Create here. Once we're created, you can call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call it Tudents. And then you can pick various zones. Um, just, I'm gonna choose US Central, uh, or at least I thought it was gonna be US Central D. Maybe it's US East 1D. Well, let me try that one. Um, and then what I'm going to do is click on customize here for the machine type. You can see it kind of defaults to this one CPU and three, seven, five gigabytes of memory. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and hit customize here, choose GPUs. Yeah. Okay, cool. So under various, uh, zones, there's only three, there's one in Asia, us, and I think somewhere in Europe. Yeah. Somewhere in Europe. Um, you can do GPUs. Uh, so I'm just going to point that out. Uh, a single GPU is going to cost you about 73 cents an hour, although this is probably unrealistic. You would have a much larger drive too. So let's, let me just make it something realistic. Let's do 100 gigabytes of an SSD. Let's just say that's what we wanted to go with. Okay, yeah, still 75 cents an hour. Mostly what you're paying for is that K80. Now, compared to both Amazon and Azure, I'm pretty sure that's actually cheaper than both of those providers. Um, it can be kind of hard because a lot of times those provide, like I remember when Azure first, Azure was like the first to announce GPUs. Um, they were kind of treating them because if, if you don't know, K80 is actually kind of two GPUs glued together. So they were kind of doing their pricing in terms of half GPUs. So anyway, it got kind of convoluted. But anyways, this, this is not a GPU server tutorial. So actually I'm gonna go to zero none GPUs. And then I'm gonna choose two virtual CPUs, let's say, and let's go with a smaller disk, that's for sure. Let's go with like 60. So with a 60, this is basically um, the same size server from like DigitalOcean, for example, costs actually more like 40 bucks a month. So this is actually significantly more expensive than DigitalOcean if these are the exact sizes you want. But if you want to be able to actually customize your server and you actually have a little bit of wiggle room in here to have, maybe you want 12 gigs of memory, but you still only want two CPUs, or maybe you want um, one shared CPU, although this one doesn't give you much choice. We are actually going to go with the shared CPU. But anyway, you have a lot more wiggle room with, with how much, uh, you know, what exactly you want to actually customize. But we're going to go with a shared uh, CPU here. 
Uh, for memory, we'll go with uh, 1.7. Um, wow, is that really the huge difference? Let's see, what was this one? 1408. Let's try a different area too. Maybe that one's just really expensive. Go to USDs. Uh, these are all basically the same. The other thing I want to point out is like if you pick if you pick different uh, zones, the pricing will be different. Usually, why is the price? There we go. At least that one changed. <laughs> um, for some reason, yeah, pretty much all the U.S. ones seem to be the same price. A lot of times the U.S. Pro there we go. That one's cheaper. Uh, 315 versus three. Oh, is it cheaper? Maybe it's not. I guess I'm fooling with myself. Anyway, um, yeah, cool. So let's go with one shared GPU or CPU rather. Uh, and then maybe it's the disk size. We'll change the disk size here in a second. So make sure you've got one shared CPU. That'll be cheap. We'll go with one seven gigabytes. Actually, we'll stick with the six. That's fine. We're not going to be doing any huge computing here. Um, and then let's go ahead and change the boot disk. We're going to choose uh, Ubuntu 16.04. And for the size, let's do, um, I don't know. I don't, I don't think we really, need, we're not going to need much for this tutorial. So what's that? Six, uh, six forty three a month. Cool. We'll, we'll do it. Hopefully that'll uh, be enough. Um, identity and access. Uh, basically I've already got these two. Let me do, uh, let's do, no service account and then let's come down here and I'm gonna go to SSH keys so the service accounts we'll kind of talk about um, that's for like the API access so I've already done that that's why I, I had some to choose from but I'm gonna choose no for now just because I don't want uh, I want us to all be on the same page so uh, coming on down to SSH keys this is how we're actually going to connect to our server so um, so if you're on Windows you're gonna to wanna to come to putty.org, download putty, because you're gonna need putty, and then also putty gen, which should come with your installation of putty. If you're on Mac or Linux, you can, if you just like Google connecting to, to, to server, or probably if you just come here and you type like connecting, connect maybe, no, okay. Um, I'll put this link in the description then, I guess. So if I forget to, someone can poke at me, uh, but you can come down here and uh, for generating SSH keys and pairing it and all that, these are all the instructions that you would need. I'm going to do the Windows version because that's the machine I'm on right now. So uh, anyway, so SSH keys, so let's say you are on Windows like me, make sure you download PuTTY. Go ahead and pause it if you don't have PuTTY already. And if you do, uh, open up PuTTY Gen. Wow, my com I'm doing my best to open it up. There we go, PuTTY Gen. Okay, so when you've got Putty Gen, go ahead and click Generate. Wiggle your mouse up here. Generates random data. You've got your key. You can change the key comment to be your username on your server. So I'm going to choose HS Kinsley. And that's basically all you have to do. That should modify this, right? So down here is where your comment would be. So go ahead and highlight and copy all of this key. And then paste it into this box here. Making sure you can see it. And then you should see this updates over here as the user, which is now HS Kinsley. Coming back over here, make sure you save the public key. And I'm just going to save it as public. And then save a private key. If you want, you can add a password. It's probably going to yell at me. Yes, it did. Um, are you sure you want to save this key without? Yes, I'm positive. And then I'm going to save this as private. Under normal circumstances, you probably would want to set a password to it. But this isn't a server that I'm going to care that much about. So I'm not going to do it. Once you've done that, close it out and you're done with this step and go ahead and hit create. And this should be a pretty quick process. You should have your server within probably 60 seconds, especially like a small one like this. Um, I'm tempted to pause while we wait, but hopefully it'll come up pretty quickly. I guess while we wait, I'm gonna open up Putty. And if you're like me uh, and you uh, do need to do the, the keys on Windows, go ahead and open PuTTY, come to SSH. There it is, the server updated. So now we have an IP to connect to. Uh, go to auth. It's kind of small, but uh, bear with me. And then browse for the private key file. It should open up right to the same place you saved it. But if not, go back and check to that path. And then let's take that private key. That's all you have to do. Now come back to the session, and what we're going to do is take this IP, the external IP, copy, paste that into the host, and go ahead and just hit enter. 
you should get this. This is just a warning that, hey, this key's not already in your registry. Are you sure, like, are you me meaning to connect to a new server? I am. Go ahead and type in whatever that username was. It authenticates with that key that we just said, and boom, we are in with our simple um, virtual machine here. So uh, one thing that is cool is you can do things like sudo apt-get install htop, and you don't have to type a password or anything. It's a sudo less or sudo list. It's a passwordless sudo. So to use sudo, you don't need a password. Same thing if you wanted to go into root, sudo su, boom, I'm root. So <laughs> interesting kind of um, setup there. But anyway, obviously, yes, if you wanted to change your password, you could just do sudo uh, password, or you can do password username and so on if you want to change a password and have one. But you, you, don't, you really don't need one. Your key is going to do all your password needs for you anyways. Um, Okay, so that's it for the just the introduction to Google Cloud, but we're going to be getting into some of the APIs in the uh, next tutorial. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, leading up to this point, feel free to leave them below. Keep the virtual machine. We're actually going to continue following along the tutorials in this virtual machine, so uh, don't destroy it or whatever. Um, and uh, that's it, so I'll see you in the next video.